Hello everybody. I am here with this video today um, to show you Landon's outfit of the day. Um, he is wearing the Guess How Much I Love You outfit that I had bought him at Christmas. And it came with this hat, which is way too big for his head, but well, it's weird. Like it's big, but it doesn't, it's not big enough that it comes down to cover his ears, but it's extremely loose. Um, and then it has this onesie that has the bunny from Guess How Much I Love You. And it's got these little polka dot footed pants that on the bum, if I can show you guys, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little tail, a bunny tail, and he's holding his little stuffed bunny from guess how much I love you this little bunny came with the book um I bought it from Walmart after Christmas it was on clearance um it also the set also came with this um long sleeve shirt it's like a side snap shirt which I love it because it says I love you as high as I can reach um, but I dressed him this morning and it was a really warm day out today. It got up to like 20, um, Celsius. And so I thought I would put the short sleeve one on him, but I think for tonight, like for overnight, I might just put the long sleeve on him because, um, it's getting chilly now for the evening. But yeah, I just wanted to show this outfit to you because Yvonne and I coordinated today um, because I had sent her the exact same set um, for her baby at Christmas. And so we have been waiting for Landon to come home so that we could dress our little boys in matching outfits. And so we agreed upon doing it today. And uh, so... Our little babies here, they're little cousins, and you know, they are both dressed the same. So I'm going to link to Yvonne's video. That's my little tulip here on YouTube. I'm gonna link to her video in the description below so that you can go and check out her video of her baby dressed in this outfit. I think it's really fun. And if you follow us on Instagram, I edited a picture together of the two of them in one photo, um, dressed in the same outfit. It's really cute. So yeah, so I had a nice day. It was a little bit of an adventurous day. Um, it's Earth Day and surprisingly enough, being Earth Day, um, on the way, as I was walking Margaret home, from her preschool, we stumbled upon a little baby raccoon. And I mean, I have seen baby raccoons before, but they're usually older babies. And this was literally the size of my hand. It was the cutest little thing and it was just sitting there and it was crying and I just, Oh, I felt so bad for the little thing. And so it was, it was kind of, neat because Margaret got to see this little baby raccoon up close and stuff and you know we were talking about Earth Day and everything and so I thought you know it would be like a pretty cool opportunity to um end up like teaching her about nature and like how we can help and everything but at anyways my whole my whole thing originally was when we first found it I was kind of like, oh my gosh, like, where's its mother? And, you know, what can I do? Um, and I mean, I felt like my hands were a little bit tied because I had Margaret with me and I had to get her home to get her lunch and get her down for her nap. And um, so I, I wasn't really sure what to do, but uh, at just as, you know, I was getting close to it because I just wanted to take like a little video clip of it and a little picture of it um to show people or whatever but um I was trying to figure out like what could we do what could we do and then um the garbage man who was 
uh, about a block away um, he was collecting the garbage and he yelled down to me and he said don't touch it um, he said when I came to empty the garbage at that house I lifted you know the lid and the mother and the baby were in the garbage can and the mother got scared and ran away so he says I've left the baby there um, you know so that hopefully the mom will come back for it and I thought okay but <clears throat> where he had left it was on this little grassy area <laughs> but it was really close to the side of the road and this little guy was you know moving moving but moving quite slowly and he was very shaky and his eyes were hardly open like he looked like he was I don't even know like I mean I know they're born without hair and he had hair but he looked like he was I don't know maybe a few days old or a week old or something he was so tiny so I thought okay well there's really nothing I can do at this moment so I went and took Margaret home got her lunch got her down for her nap and posted on Instagram and of course a lot of people were giving me suggestions on what to do um, and I was just telling them that I really couldn't do anything right at that moment because I was at work and Margaret was sleeping and obviously I cannot leave her unattended to go and take care of a raccoon and some idiots <laughs> got on Instagram these two girls started saying that I was a twit and that they um, pitied my husband and that obviously I had complete disregard for human life and that I cared more about my stupid plastic dolls and that if it was Landon that was there on the side of the road that I would pick like pick him up in a heartbeat and help him or something and I was like, you know, I responded back and I was like, look it, like I have a two and a half year old in my care. She is not even my daughter. She is someone else's daughter who has entrusted me with her care. She is in bed sleeping. I cannot leave her unattended to go and take care of a raccoon. Like what more do you want me to do? Um, and the reality is that like I was on my phone after Margaret went to bed um, looking up the phone number of a place that I might be able to call for it and um, I found the wildlife rescue centers website for you know here in Toronto and I looked up you know what to do if you find a baby raccoon on their website and they said they strictly said do not call us unless it has been more than 24 hours since the mother has been around and it had at that point only been two hours um so what it suggested to do it said that usually the moms will come back later in the day or most of the time at night when no one is around and they feel safe so they said to keep the raccoon in the area where you found it because the mom will most likely go back to that spot to look for the baby and they said they suggested putting it in a box that it hopefully can't climb out of um, just to keep it in that place so that it wouldn't walk away somewhere else and like wander off so I started searching the house <laughs> For a box and I was not having any luck and my mother called me and um, <laughs> I went and sat down in, in the basement to talk on the phone with her and I'm talking with her and all of a sudden I look over and right beside the TV stand there is a little square box just the right size for the little baby now the only problem though was that the sides of the box to me I wasn't sure they would be high enough um, that he couldn't climb out, but I thought it's better than nothing. So I grabbed that box and the website actually had a note that you could print off to 
attached the box. Now we, I didn't have an access to a printer. So I just copied the note onto the side of the box with permanent marker and um, got it all ready. And as soon as Margaret woke up, we went over and I got, I also read on the website that it is a myth um, that if you touch a baby raccoon, the mom will abandon it. It won't come back. They said you can pick it up, just be gentle and whatever, and use protection like if you think that it might bite you or whatever. But this this baby was so helpless and, and you know, I could tell it was so young. I knew it wouldn't bite me. So I gently picked him up, which was such an awesome experience to be able to hold a little baby raccoon like that. So that was pretty cool. And he felt nice and warm, so he wasn't cold. Thankfully, it was a warm day. So I put him in the box with the note, and as I was doing that... um there was a lady that was coming to actually check on him as well. And so she was so glad that I had bought, brought the box and everything. And so I explained to her what I had read and we talked about it and everything. And so I left and I said I would come back to check on it later. So Margaret and I went to check on it again in a couple hours. And uh, by the time we got back there, the box was gone and I was a little bit upset and I was like, I clearly said not to move it. But then I found out that the lady who lived in the house that the squirrel was, uh, the squirrel, the raccoon was in front of, she came home and she said that the mother raccoon um, is always around in her backyard um, and around the garbage cans in her backyard. So she decided to put the baby in her backyard because she felt it would be a lot safer because there's no dogs and stuff going by. Um, and she's hoping that the mom will come tonight to pick up her baby. Um, if not, she has the phone number of the place to call to get help. Um, yeah, the web, apparently, um, the other lady that was there, she did decide to call the number just to double check on the information and the recording said to actually give it two nights before calling. Um, but we kind of collectively agreed that we should just call, they should just call in the morning if it's still there because we felt it was just much too young to wait, um, two nights without its mom. So, so say a little prayer for the little baby raccoon, um, that his mom will come back and pick him up. And I just want to say to those who were sending out all the hate to me, uh, I, you obviously don't know what you're talking about. Um, my world does not revolve around these dolls and I absolutely love animals. Um, my mom and I love animals and there was even one time a few years ago that I came across a squirrel that was injured and clearly about to die on the side of the road or in the middle of the road, I should say. And I moved the squirrel off of the road so that he wouldn't get run over. And I stayed with that squirrel until he took his last breath so that he wasn't alone. So, you know, like, and in that situation, there was nothing that could have been done because I could tell that he was literally on death's door and, you know, so I just stayed with him, um, and I petted him and until he was gone. So, you know, for you to say that I don't give a crap about animals, it's not true. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Risk my job, risk losing my job. Like Margaret's mother entrusted me in her, in my care and I cannot leave the house. I can't leave her unattended, even though she was sleeping. You know, she could have woken up at any minute and if I was not in that house, something could have happened and then I would be held accountable. So, um, a child's life <laughs> comes above an animal. I'm sorry. And um, these people are trying to tell me that they would call the place and lie and say that the animal has been there more than 24 hours. And I think that is dead wrong because... It's not giving the mother a chance to get back to her baby. If you go and do that, if you call and you lie when it's only been like three hours since the mother's been there and you lie and say that that raccoon's been there more than 24 hours, 
then you're taking that baby away from his mom. Because if she comes back looking this evening and her baby's gone, then to me that's even worse. Sorry guys, my camera died so I'm on my phone. And also, <laughs> one of the girls was trying to get me to post the address of the place so that she could come and take the baby raccoon. And I was like, really? You expect me to post the address of where I am currently located with a child that is not mine on a public forum? Really? Really? Sure, I'll just post the address where I am at so that people will know where I am and can come and find me. And also, you know, at the same time, why don't we just, you know, we're posting that on a public forum. You want to open it up to pedophiles to come and find Margaret? Like, really? Sorry, not posting my address publicly on a public space, on a forum, especially my workplace where I have a child to think about. So just some food for thought there for those two people out there that thought that that was a good idea. Yeah. And then they have the audacity to tell me to grow up and be an adult. Really? I think they are the ones that need to be an adult because obviously they saw nothing wrong with posting an address where I have a child. Sorry. No, nope. not going to do it. That's not a mature decision. That's not an adult decision. And it's not a safe decision. So just saying. <laughs> so yeah, usually I don't tend to address these haters. But honestly, in a situation like this, I think this kind of information needs to be known because obviously these people don't have any common sense. <laughs> so, you know, this information needs to be known that this is how you deal with these situations. But posting an address publicly, you've got to be nuts. But yeah, basically, I just wanted to share that story with you because it was kind of a cool experience in that I, you know, did what I could to help. I mean, I don't live in that area. I live an hour away from the area. So there's not a whole lot that I could do, but I'm just glad that I managed to speak to the woman that lived in the house that the raccoon was in, um, so that, you know, she is on top of that and taking care of that. But, um, it was a, it was a pretty neat thing to happen on Earth Day because it kind of, um, opened up, uh, it, it kind of became part of the curriculum for the day because I was teaching Margaret about Earth Day and we were doing an Earth Day art activity this afternoon. Um, so it kind of all tied in and she got to learn about a little bit about wildlife and helping nature. And then it was funny, we went and played in her backyard to blow bubbles and stuff and we found some litter that had blown into her backyard and she mentioned that there was garbage and so... Um, together we picked it up and put it in the garbage so that was pretty cool um and it was I mean like to hold this little baby oh my god he was so cute the little baby uh, raccoon I'll insert like a picture and the little video clips that I took at the end of this video He's so cute I just really hope that his mom will come back but I have I have a pretty um good feeling that she will since um she she's been seen in that area a lot so I have I have faith fingers crossed and lots of prayers so but yeah just you know people like I know you want to help but sometimes you need to let nature do its thing um you know jumping in there and taking that baby into your home or taking it to a wildlife sanctuary or whatever is taking it away from its mom. You're not giving the mom a chance to find her baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, is that mom, these moms will, you know, these animals will leave their babies for long periods of time anyway to go and get food for them. So it's, it's part of nature and they know what they're doing. And it said, um, 
the information I was reading, it said that raccoons are like the best mothers. They are very loyal to their babies. And um, I did not know like that even if you touch the raccoons, like they will never reject their babies. So um, they said definitely like the majority of the time, the mother will come back for her babies. So let's have faith that that happens, but just let it be a lesson. Like don't go jumping down someone's back and thinking that you know them when you don't. Um, you know, I did all that I could at that moment. I had to wait until Margaret was awake so I could take her with me. You know, I mean, it's my job. My job is to make sure that Margaret is taken care of, has her needs met, and is safe. And if I don't do that, then I'm losing my job. <laughs> so, you know, what do you want me to do, people? Anyways, I hope you enjoy the little picture and the little video of the baby at the end. Um, and I hope you enjoyed seeing Landon in his outfit. And I'm sorry if this was like a long-winded video, but... I just really wanted to share the story with you guys and just share the information so that, you know, I know if, if you love animals, you just want to jump right in and do whatever you can to help protect a baby animal and help them. But sometimes the best thing is to just let the mother do her thing and come back for the baby, you know, just keep an eye. And, you know, if it's, if it's been, you know, a long time, then you know the mother's not coming back. But it was literally, at the point that I was being attacked, it had literally only been like two to three hours. So, and most of the time raccoons do not come out during the day. So, and I'm pretty sure the mother was terrified and scared <laughs> by the garbage man and the garbage truck. So she was probably just waiting until she felt it was safe to come back. So... Anyways, that's my little story of the day. <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you liked seeing Lannan. He's so freaking cute. So, yes. So, anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to go and check out Yvonne's. I will put a link in the description below. And we'll see you next time. I hope everyone has an awesome weekend. Bye, guys. There's a baby raccoon that apparently fell out of the garbage can when the garbage man was, and the mom ran away, but I hope she'll be back for her baby. Oh my gosh, I've never seen a baby raccoon so small. He's so cute. Don't touch him, Margaret. Why? Just look at him. Why don't touch him? Oh, he's falling asleep. He's a tired little guy. Oh my goodness, so cute. <laughs>